After what seems like an eternity, your rapid descent comes to an abrupt end. You remain still for a moment while your heart settles and your eyes adjust, breathing in stale, forgotten air. Before you, a narrow and eroded walkway becomes faintly visible in the dim light, cutting a winding path through a cavern so expansive it seems a world unto itself. In the distance, you can make out the cold gleam of living Audra veins that spike and fork in and out of view from the murky depths beneath. Their glow a faint and fleeting guide along the ancient trail. You look above at the opening you jump through, now barely a speck of light like some distant star alone in the cosmos and forever out of reach. Your only way lies ahead. Well, that went better than I expected. I think that statue of Woodica was watching us soil ourselves on the way down. Everyone all right? No shattered knees? Good. Just me, then. This place is cursed. Oh, it's 
Stop! <laughs> Hello, sister. It has truly been ages. You are so different now from who you were then, yet much remains the same. Old troubles with a new face. What is it that has brought you here? I'd hoped after our last discussion you would find what you sought. Has it eluded you all this time? I can only guess your presence here has something to do with Theos. The energy of this place. Change it after all this time. He would still stand against the tide. I will tell you what I remember. I can see his influence, still hanging like a weight about your neck. So it always was. He had inspired something in you. We spoke of him, but it was just after the trial. You were... That the gods aren't real. <laughs> I'd dreaded the idea from the moment the Delamgon suggested it. And yet, it almost feels like a relief. She's not serious. <laughs> Perhaps not to her. Many are those whom the gods have scorned. This is petty retribution. Nonsense! Clearly she has not been on the receiving end of a god's ire. She'd know how real the gods can be. What I taught was that the gods whose faith we had been spreading were not gods at all, but something else entirely. Something created by people. They were conceived by Engwith, a society of high minds and broad concerns. Theos's people. Generation after generation, they prodded and worked the stitching of the world and unlocked its secrets. One day, they f it shook them, this finding. If they could discover this on their own, how long until others would? How long before war and chaos? I never thought of it as faith, but I think you are right to call it that. Let the world see. Let them decide what to do. That was my faith. I became a missionary. The Anguithan missionaries all knew it, but they never told the rest of us. They meant it to be a secret that died. You asked me this once before. 
Nothing I can say would be any proof. Everyone faces this truth at one time or another. What if all the tragedy, all the persecution, came in defense of an imposter? That's not... That, that can't be right. The power of the gods is undeniable. The truth of the story they weave is not. What if it were forbidden knowledge rather than fault that earned your doom? I have seen with my own eyes the deceptions of my goddess. You speak of her deceptions, but what of your own? Was it her words that led you down your path? Or was it the absence of her words? A gap that you filled with your own broken thoughts. What if you had always been alone with... Well, as poorly as I've chosen my guides, I suppose... The freedom has always... What if neither guide knew the way? How then would you choose a course? Wow teaches us that the gods cannot give you lasting wisdom. What if the cycle of birth and death is nothing more than a tool of endless preoccupation? The wheel would seem to grant us little choice in the matter. Yet surely we are capable of more than mere endurance. Surely when the... I ask these things not to trouble you, but to show why they must be confronted. No answer is simple. But somewhere between them all lies a truth so beautiful, not even a god could conceive it. Do we not owe ourselves a chance to find our part in it? truly what you believe, then you are a far different- I've been alone here with my thoughts for so long now. I've found peace with my failures, and with my punishment. I need to know why you chose to remain with the Inquisition. 
even after you'd learned the truth. Do you... Do you remember? I never wanted that. I had hoped that what I taught would replace your beliefs with something that made... I've always looked up to you. You had heard both sides, seen everything. If not you, then who? I expected dissent, but I needed to know that true faith would prevail, even knowing what you've told me. Some part of me knows it doesn't truly answer what I wish to know, nor will an eternity of silent contemplation. I will have only my guesses and suspicions, and that will have to do. And what of your understanding of our past? Are you at ease with the choice you made? I have always forgiven you. Whatever your reason, no quarrel. At first I thought this might be the source of your soul's anguish. But now I see I was mistaken. You are not divided on this matter. You have put it behind you. It is with Theos that your agony lies, in sun and shadow. Your questions are not for me, but for him. And it may be that yet if there is anything I can tell you that would be of use, ask and in a manner of speaking. This is Brayeth Yaman, the court of the penitents. Souls are confined here until they repent. They must beg the forgiveness of a god, pledge their soul to them, and they will be lifted from this place to the world above. In truth, they receive leniency, the spite of Whitaka is eternal. They linger above, at the side of the old court, and are not permitted to leave the island, forever severed from the cycle. This prison was full once in the days of the Inquisition, but time weathers all things, even will. I'm the only tenant who remains. Yet, I feel their presence, they aid you because they would bend you to their own purposes. But these souls, these forgiven the gods have bequeathed you like chattel. They were loyal followers in life. Last time someone asked me that, I was bound to an iron wheel with a broken spine. There are many things I've come to doubt about the choices I made in life. The gods need to be reminded that we have a spirit, and that spirit is proof against their power. I could not say for sure. But you have been to Sun and Shadow before, and it came at a crossroads in your life, when much of what you knew had been upended. I have to believe it will come to you. His words mattered to you when you knew him then. After you and I spoke, you went immediately to seek him out. Perhaps you simply sought calm. He cares only for the secret he keeps locked away. That's why he's always favored Woodica. It isn't in her love of promises or just... If Theos succeeds, there will be a shift in the back. You will not find a more resolute being on all of Eora. There is no offer you could make, nor spell you could cast, nor pain you could inflict that would... Theos will not wait for you. If you do not catch up to him now, you may never find him again.
If I repent, all I have done has meant nothing. It's a cruel fate to waste all this time to be reunited with my only sister, only to be forced if ever we should meet again.
So, it's true. The gods are a sham that people have followed for thousands of years. We've been lied to. Our whole lives, and many lives before that. And it's led us to put our faith in a pantheon of gods that never deserved it in the first place. I'm surprised to hear you say this. It seems that much harm comes from imposing authority where perhaps none is needed. We've seen the atrocities that members of the Leaden Key have committed without even understanding why or for whom they act. Uh, for once, the half-souled elf is right. To live in ignorance is to allow the- I've also been thinking. There won't be much left of Theos by the time you're done with him, if I know how you operate. That will leave the Leaden Key headless. Perhaps it's best it stays. Then let's face Theos. <laughs> well, doesn't that just beat all? Here I was, wondering all this time whether all these terrible things were people's fault or the gods. Turns out they might be the same thing. I wonder how things would have gone different 15 years ago if the Raid Sarens had been told their god was made in some forge or kiln someplace. Would we still have gone to war? I could see the rebellion still happening, but I don't know that they would have invaded. I don't know. When Woden left for war, we, uh, had a fight. About him going off to war. He was set on it. My parents warned him. They said you get a new country with every trip across the border, but your god, you only got me. I didn't know who was right. I said every vicious thing I could think of, trying to change his mind. He brushed it off. It just got me madder, of course, him being so calm. By the time I had cooled off, months had passed. One morning it dawns on me that my brother always knew better than me. If he was so sure of what he was doing, then I should be there with him. I packed my things and was on the road that same morning. Of course, what I didn't know then was he'd already changed his mind. By that time, he was dead on that field. If I'd have left with him, we'd both be dead, so... I found my own way in the end. It wasn't my brother's and it wasn't my god's. I don't regret it. Whether Widewin was Aeothus, well, it crossed my mind. I hope that wasn't it. Still one more mess we gotta... Even my Stelgar eyes can't see in this darkness.
full of surprises, aren't you? Incredible! I knew the Builders could work wonders, but this... This is amazing! Many spirits stir here, edged with anger, violence. We light our own path now, Watcher. Can you do that again? I, I had something in my eye. I missed most of it. Understand the value of a mystery watcher, a buried scroll, a hidden truth. These are my ways. You unravel a thread watcher, one you have lost and discovered over generations.
Ready to take the oath.
I am trusting you to remain loyal to the gods in this. If you do not, you will have greater powers than me to answer to. But you... This is a missionary, same as I... Asionis. They have held off many would-be invaders. You are ready to give a confession? I am ready to hear one from you. You are far from your post, Inquisitor. What brings you here? That woman. It has men. They are mon- What is a god? Hmm? A higher power? A rewarder of good deeds. We are in a sacred place within earshot of the gods themselves. This is not the time. You've been through much these past few months. You will return home and you will... There are many who continue to spread the lies of the apostate. How did you find it? Another in a string of acts of petty defiance. For all her knowledge, she always preferred spite over reason. Then she should have obeyed. I ask one thing of all my followers. She was incapable. What of your cohorts, then? They have followed you to their deaths. Is it loyalty that brings them here? You. You worship. Your spies are good. Yet when your god needed you the most, you chose your country. We were being invaded. Then I should think your hometown. They made cake. Hard to blame people for losing faith. The gods argue over how best to prevent kit. What of you, Orlan? My agents tell me you are far from home, both in distance and in years. Have your friends proven a worthy distraction from the pain of ostracism? Ostracism? Is that the name for the groin rash your mother gave me? Don't fool yourself, old man. You know nothing about me. Enlighten me, then. I give both gods their due service, but I am- But such difficulty on the way. If you had- My tribe was unfit to serve me. And yes, I'm not fit to serve any god. I serve all people. Better than they will ever know. Better to live a co- You built a we- I served my god. Yet the other builders were slain. Eleven. Whatever desire I had to be redeemed. Or was it merely that your goddess wanted you dead as well, and your delusions of importance prevented you from seeing the obvious? A whore's beguiling charms, nothing more. But the spell's broke now, Theos. The trial's over. You were able to destroy a god because another god wished it. Without her hand to guide you, you could... State your name and purpose, young acolyte.
My name belonged to the gods and my hand to their service. You serve none but yourself. Without contact with your order, you can have no higher purpose. Only and I should have done it years before. And that uncertainty would lead you where it leads everyone. To doubt, to emptiness, to the many cruelties in- You are here because you are lost. The gods cannot reach everyone, I'm- I gather you have had your soul awakened. Why else would you shadow my footsteps like some stray mongrel? You think I have something to offer you, but our business was concluded long ago. You think your abilities only flow in one direction. That isn't how it works, I'm afraid. Not for me. For all that you saw of my soul in the sanitary, I answered your questions once. That your soul is not fit to accept the answers is of little concern to me. I lied to no one. Not to you, not to anyone. The gods are real. They are everything we need them to be, and the world is better for it. The heart of this country has skipped a beat. Nothing more. I have done far worse. I plunged the peaceful kingdom of Telosus into civil war. I slew the monarch of Desantio, whose people never knew hardship under his rule, and replaced him with a cruel despot who brought them to ruin. When plague arrived at the great city of Arborensis, I saw to it that the cure did not. They piled their dead outside the city in heaps that rose above their walls. That's where you- There was a time, back when your soul was still a shapeless mist, when the world believed only in false god. But all that changed when they learned of the true gods. Our gods. All those misshapen, Bestial instincts melted beneath the radiance of our god's majesty. You could see it in their eyes. There is no f Have you imagined this existence? The one the apostate would have created. We are not all so- But more than that, it would be a hollow existence. All mysteries forever unanswered. All purposes constructed from meaninglessness. No endings to bring closure. Only a wheel. Turning without mercy, grinding our spirits to dust. For all my years, I have seen all I have seen, the millennia of experience. I will not be dissuaded from this course. This is the only way. We are all controlled by with your soul and thousand. Hear me, Woodica. Your servant calls for a. Ah! <laughs> 
Forgive me. Build on Saul. That's the servant down and the mist. I hope this is the end, but what's to stop him from being born again with the same ill intent? And before you thousands of souls he has tortured. At some point, you have to look at the things you're he spent his lives. More than any of us will ever know. For what? To apply the teachings of Durance would more immediately satisfy the cravings in my bone. Astounding. I always knew the leaden key stood for something big, but even if you send the souls somewhere specific now, who knows what the next turn of the wheel will make of them? We can't really control what happens to them. Nor should we try. I had to see the monster Theos had become to realize it's your decision, of course. Theos may be gone, but his crimes, the wounds he has inflicted, remain. Yet before you lies an opportunity to heal, to restore. Only through the healing of families, people will long remember the legacy. Ah, oh, the end of the road greets us at last. You would that my own trial had produced such an outcome. I had figured myself for the field all this time. Theos, he had hold of your soul from a long time back, seems like. You get what you needed from those can be hard to come by. You'll be feeling better soon, then. 
Good. <laughs> That's really got a lot of people out there thinking they've been abandoned by their gun. If it was in my power, and, and I know it's not, but if it was, after what you've been through, though. Victory looks good on you. There was a blur about your soul that lingers no more. Seems putting Theos to rest has given you some measure. So many hopes and dreams, all of them torn from the cycle and trapped for... for wall knows how long. You could set them free. I know you were the right person to decide the fate of so many. You helped bring me closer to WoW, and I believe WoW delivered you to this moment. This decision... Scrap of flesh, you scar! But my mistress would appeal to your sense of perspective. For you know that all things have their place. You have labored at the pleasure of others. That shriveled hag in Hotter's house. Those pompous, dear wooden zealots. And now the gods give you orders and commands. The exiled queen is not an ungrateful patron. Finish the work Theos began. Strengthen Woodica with these souls and allow her to become the most powerful of all the gods, with you as her favorite. Say that now, but when you're standing in front of the machine. At your command, the ancient device became your instrument, spinning to life with deafening resonance and gathering up the swirling essence like thread on a great spindle. There, in the pale pulsing glow of the machine that set you on this path long ago, you summoned all your strength, focusing on your objective and blocking out all else. With a single concussive blast that rocked the chamber and sent you tumbling to the ground, you freed the souls from their stasis. Exhausted, your consciousness slipping away, your last sight was of the machine, dark and dormant. Then your eyes closed, and sleep welcomed you at long last. After coming to and searching for some time, you discovered the route Theos used to enter Sun in Shadow, and embarked on a long and arduous ascent back to the surface. You emerged in Ter Evron after days of tunneling through the rubble Theos had left behind. And when you stepped into the daylight, you were faced with a different Deerwood than the one you had left. At your direction, the souls diverted by Theos were guided back to the vessels originally meant for them. For the first time, parents of hollow-born children woke to the cries of their infants and looked into their eyes to see them staring back. People fell to their knees where they stood, thanking Helia or Magrin 
or even Aethus for their forgiveness of whatever guilt they felt they bore. But for all the relief that had come to some parents, others only found new grief. For many thousands of Hollowborn had died during Widewind's legacy, many by their parents' own hands. For those children, there would be no homecoming. Yet the last hollow birth was in the past now, and those parents willing to risk trying for a new child were frequently rewarded, often with twins. Many felt they saw Helia's hand in it, and the year would be remembered as the Year of Helia's Splendor. Lord Radric's zeal had brought him back to life once, but it would not do so again. Radric's destruction at your hands spelled the end of his suffocating rule over Gilded Vale and the surrounding area. In his absence, the village prospered, becoming a popular destination for new settlers anxious to leave Defiance Bay after the riots. Without a nearby ruler, it also grew more wild, with many settlers moving on as soon as they'd arrived, turned off by lawlessness that was excessive even by Deerwarden standards. Nevertheless, Despite the challenges of living there, Gilded Vale had survived, and would continue to survive for the foreseeable future. Following the assassinations of Duke Avar Wolfgren and Lady Webb, Defiance Bay was thrown into political upheaval. In the ensuing weeks, the streets had become the domain of looters and blackguards. Few dared to step outside their own doors alone or unarmed. But once the dozens had regrouped in the wake of the riots, they quickly put an end to the criminal activity, patrolling the streets in droves and administering their brand of law on any perceived offenders. They also took the opportunity to depose the weakened Knights of the Crucible from their position of authority, branding them traitors to the people for their actions during the riots. Whatever Knights weren't stoned to death in front of their keep were forced into exile. The external contingent of Knights stationed at Fleetbreaker Castle would remain there, their high justice plotting the city's recapture. The dozens would soon find themselves overwhelmed by the problems of a leaderless metropolis, and in the days and months ahead, Defiance Bay remained on the brink of collapse. The destruction of the machine atop Ter Noaneth spelled the end of the reanimated corpses in Heritage Hill. Though at first few were willing to venture into the abandoned district, it was soon cleaned out and rebuilt. The district's horrors still fresh in people's minds, it would be some time before it was fully repopulated, but eventually the lure of cheap prime land would all but erase the memory. The Duke's assassination at the apparent hands of an Anamancer had caused catastrophic rioting in the streets of Defiance Bay, and few Anamancers survived the first day. Many Deerwoodens took the end of Widewind's legacy as a sign, both that the gods did not approve of Anamancy and that the purging of Animancers in Defiance Bay had been enough to satisfy them. In time, their rage would subside, and a number of surviving Animancers remained in and around Defiance Bay, often taking to the wilds to practice their science without repercussions. The fortress of Cad Nua emerged as a bastion of security in the midst of an untamed land, becoming the envy of every thane and earl in Deerwood. Legend grew over time of its impregnability, and stories of formidable invaders easily scattered by the Keep's defenses became popular around the hearths of Deerwood and Inns. Likewise, it also became a beacon to travelers, merchants, and visiting dignitaries alike. Reputed as the finest fortress in all Deerwood, people would journey from near and distant lands alike to experience its fabled hospitality and grandeur. Palagina had gone against the Duke Spell's orders by inventing a new trade arrangement with the Anamenfath to accommodate the recovering Deerwood and Market. With the Deerwood's people still weakened by Widewind's legacy, the Valian Republics easily pushed their would-be competitors out of the market. For her outrageous insubordination and audacity, Palagina was banished from the Republics. She traveled north in the east. Aravius took his leave of the party and, after his first bath in years, returned to his nomadic lifestyle. With his homesickness expunged, he found renewed joy and tranquility in his wandering survey of the wilderness. For the first time in his life, he ventured beyond sight of the mountains of Er Glonfath. During his travels, he penned numerous journals and sketches detailing his travels through frozen tundra, searing desert, 
and tropical forests. Wherever he went, Heravius left behind stories of the Autumn Druid, a temperamental, one-eyed, wise man of Adair chose not to return home to Gilded Vale. Still most comfortable far from cities, he settled in Deerford, which, like many towns in the Deerwood, was beginning the slow process of rebuilding. Believing now that it was the obligation of Kith to be the leaders their gods had not, Adair was soon named mayor of the town, and under his guidance, Deerford soon began to prosper. He expelled the last of the Scanites from the area, and drew new settlers with the offer of land, a trick he had learned from someone he otherwise preferred to forget. When the dust settled in Sun and Shadow, Aloth looked upon the remains of Theos Ixarchanon, his former master. He saw where the Grand Master had gone wrong, and what would be required to undo the harm Theos had wrought. With a flick of his wrist, he burned Theos' robe, headdress, and every other symbol of the man's power. Never again, he vowed, should Kith live in fear and blind to be- After all that he had learned in the Watcher's company, Kanorua could no longer see meaning in his pursuit of the Tanvi Oratoa. He decided to leave what remained of it within the depths of the Endless Paths and return home. Kana bid the Watcher farewell and sailed back to Rawatai, spending the tempestuous journey reflecting on the time he had lost to the pursuit of falsehoods. His family found Kana much changed, his fiery excitement with Theos defeated and the souls released from sun and shadow. Healthy children were born once again in the Deerwood. The grieving mother sought a place where she might do penance for the birthing bell. She returned to Deerford, where, to the astonishment of the villagers, she delivered the first healthy child in over a decade. She Durance used Magrin's strength only until Theos had been cast from the world, and then swore off her influence entirely. Regret came to weigh heavily on his mind, and a man who had never previously lacked for words or opinions came to embrace silence and contemplation. He continued to wander, penniless and destitute, searching now not for the reason for his goddess's silence, but for a mechanism for revenge. The charred robes he continued to wear as a reminder that he had been burned by his goddess, and not just by the flames of the godhammer. Sagani experienced the four months of her journey back to Masuk in vivid colors. She strove to memorize every moment of her final trip through the Deerwood, Er Glonfoth, the Valian Republics, and beyond, preparing to tell her village of what she had seen on her long journey. All of Masuk shared in her triumph, and she felt her pride and elation magnified by the joy of her village. Never again did she doubt the value of her sacrifices. After decades as a long hunter, Sagani finally became one of Masuk's most respected elders. She guided her community with wise counsel, and a generation after she finally passed. For you, the death of Theos brought an end to your waking visions, and a silence to the whispers of the past. In their absence, you were able to sleep. The questions of a distant life, but at the moment, there was little to be done, and the matter would have to wait. A long journey loomed ahead.